Hi, welcome back. For this video, I thought I would wear my finisher t-shirt, um, but that would be too obvious, so I thought I'll just wear my medal instead. Um, so, if you've been following along, you'll know that I did an Ironman, and uh, I actually finished it. I managed to cross the damn line <laughs> in a oh, somewhat respectable time of 14 hours and seven minutes. So I started just before eight in the morning and finished just after 10 at night. It was the worst, but also maybe one of the best days of my existence, kind of all rolled into one. I woke up incredibly nervous. I'd been nervous the whole lead up to it, um, but knew one way or the other day was gonna end. How are your thoughts and feelings? I'm trying to decide why I'm so nervous for this. Thank you very much. All right. But the other yellow one that you swim towards is the one there, That's not right. that one there. Turned up, yeah. made sure to make sure I knew where I was going with the swim course because it was a course to go out, coming back around, slightly out again and then in. And I didn't want to be that person that was like swimming to the other boy. It was beautiful sunrise. The tone kind of was set. The light was really nice. It felt like a, a new day was dawning and a new day was indeed dawning, and Iron Man day was dawning for me. <laughs> I don't know what it was about it, it just, it just felt really surreal. I still felt like I was there for someone else. <laughs> I didn't, you know, I was like, this is mad, this is really cool. Oh, and then I, it would dawn on me that I was the one that was doing it. I think there were 3,000 participants that day, but there were under 400 females. So walking into the pen in the morning, um, everyone's making a last minute loo stop and I was like wow it's like 20 to 1 men to woman and not just like big men like tall so I, I found that that was a little bit intimidating because it's sort of like to begin with I was like oh, it just feels like I, I'm in the wrong place or it feels like I should again like I shouldn't be doing this it shouldn't be me um, but everyone's really kind of helped I mean everyone's focused on their own effort for the day but people are more than happy to help I'd forgotten my swim cap got pointed in the direction of the help desk and Kind of, yeah, did, did like a warm-up swim and then my wave, because I was in the last wave, obviously being um, inexperienced, we were last to set off and there was no real waiting. It was just like doing your warm-up swim and then they were kind of get, getting people off in fives. and I went and started the swim. So the swim was one hour 24. It was the best time I've ever done. I saw Alex and Vicky on the bridge. They were shouting out. Come on, Chanel. Come on. It did, it did go by relatively quickly. I hadn't ever swum in a group of people before, but because they set you off in groups of five, it really wasn't the carnage that I guess you kind of see when you're watching Kona or other big triathlons. It was quite respectable. It was kind of the last probably 500 metres that I found really difficult because by that point I was really starting to get motion sick. I felt like I'd been drinking solidly for about eight hours when I got out of the water. I could not stand up so I had to get helped out. Um, took a little bit of a tumble. At the same time was trying to remember like how to get the wetsuit off and you know not take your goggles and hat off first because you've got something to hold. Ran and got my bag and was already starting to take the wetsuit off and she's like no no you need to take the bag to the zone. So just all like all learnings, all things you're kind of never going to know until you start it. Um, and then it was a yeah, a little jog, pick up the bike and set out on the bike leg. Now the bike leg was two laps, uh, two 90 kilometre laps. Come Chanel. First one, I think everyone was feeling fresh, ready to go. Second one definitely for me, passing kind of through town, knowing you were going way back out the coast into rural Copenhagen again and coming back. Uh, started to, yeah, like energy levels were dropping. I think mentally though I knew it was the run that was going to be the, the real crunch point. So I kind of was just like, this is a bike, like, you, you know, you can do this, this is just a, a pedal along. So I managed to do the six and a half hour bike without getting off the bike. So just cruising through aid stations to pick up uh, gels and drink. 
and fruit. I can't look at another banana because that was all I could kind of stomach. Yeah, just basically could hear Alex all the time in my ear saying, make sure you use the tri bars because you can shave 10 to 15 minutes off your time. So I was resting and then like occasionally getting up, resting. You all right? No. You got loads of time, you got time. You can get changed. And then came into the city and by that point, obviously because I started almost an hour after most people, everyone staggered, um, a lot of people were on their sort of second, third lap of the marathon. So it's four 10 kilometre laps around in a city, Copenhagen, which if you've been there before will know it's a pretty picturesque place. You've got loads, like over seven hours, you've got over seven hours. Okay, well done. You can do this. First lap I started out and I was like, great, oh my gosh, I can do this because I'd come off the bike leg and my coach and Alex had said, you've got stacks of time, you've got seven hours to, you know, before time cut. So I thought, I, I can do this, I can actually do this now. This is now a reality, it's not a kind of unknown like the day it started out with because the whole time I was just, I, all I wanted to do was to make time cut. Um, so the first lap was great. I was running a sub five hour marathon pace, which I'm like, never done. I think adrenaline was kicking in and then Second lap slowed down. You all right? Yeah, yeah, fine. And the, when I was coming back in, I could see most people were finishing or finished. The crowds were starting to thin out, and I just fell off a cliff, like just completely went down. Picked up a little bit. Uh, did my gels and Gatorade. When I saw Alex, um, as I was about to start the third lap, I was in tears. I can't tell you how grim everything felt, but I knew I was in this black hole and there was only one way out. You either stop and like, but you're so close to the finish by then. And he had said like, this is gonna be mentally the toughest lap because you know, you're gonna know that you're gonna be coming back into the city and then having to go back one more time. Um, and that, yeah, it, it helped knowing that I was in the worst part of it because I knew once I got onto that final lap, it would be the last time that I was seeing everything and the finish line definitely was in sight instead of running past it again. Which is, it's cruel, it's like you, can, you can't see the exact line but you can hear everyone, you can hear the music. Um, so my fourth lap was dark, there was basically no one around. Um, so many of the crowds had gone, but bless the people that stayed to like the bitter end. And I, the last sort of kilometre 35 to 40, I had to do a walk because I'd been trying a hybrid, like run, walk, run, walk for the, the third to last lap. And yeah, I kind of kept saying to myself, I really want to run across the finish line. Um, but I, I couldn't, I just couldn't, I couldn't get going. Um, I was vomiting, I couldn't keep food in, everything was exiting any way it could and just started to feel really dizzy and just sick and I, yeah, I think my body at that point was sending very clear signals that it had had enough. But like I say, you're so close to finishing. And then finally the final lap came. I have never been so glad just to start seeing people when I was coming back into the city and the crowds were sort of like right by the finish line and the last two kilometres I managed to run. Like it's indescribable coming down the chute to like the words you are an Iron Man and people clapping and just the energy and the elation and the relief to cross the line. I am still trying to figure out what like how to put that into words a week on. And for my efforts, I was rewarded with a uh, debilitating sickness four days afterwards, where I basically couldn't get out of bed and a cold and um, a pretty sad looking bank account, you know. But hey, I got the medal. And I guess the all consuming question will I get the tattoo remains to be seen. But I know I would like to do a full cost breakdown of it. Um, I know there's a few questions around nutrition and 
kind of just how that was paced out. It was, you know, put it up to my coach and Alex who helped me on that side of things. But I would say anyone thinking about doing it, it is so worth doing because that elation, that sort of fulfillment you get when you've completed something is bonkers and all consuming as an Ironman. Kind of feel like you can take on anything else, like any kind of challenge. Thanks for watching.